Hey guys, Christy here from The Soul Life and welcome back to our channel. Today we're actually going to be talking about a little bit more of an advanced topic when it comes to ClickUp. That is ClickUp dependencies. So what are ClickUp dependencies? Before we dive into showing you some examples and how to set them up, I want to really explain what they are so you get a better understanding holistically. ClickUp dependencies are basically what it sounds like. It's when a task is dependent on another task in order to get done. So for example, for my YouTube video to be published, well, there are a lot of different things that have to happen and that are dependent on each other. So the last thing, uploading the actual YouTube video, is dependent on filming it, doing the SEO, creating the thumbnail, all of that stuff. So when these tasks are on the calendar for a team member, we have dependencies on each of them so that they can see, okay, I actually have a a red dot on mine, which means that I am blocking the next person from doing their job. If you go to do your job and you have a yellow dot, that means you are waiting on someone to complete their task before you can do yours. And when you go ahead and try to check off a task that has a dependency, it's going to say, wait, hold on. It looks like you're waiting on something to get done. Can you actually go ahead and check this off? So having dependencies is really crucial as you're growing and scaling a team, dependencies are amazing for agencies so that everyone can kind of be in good communication and have these markers without actually having to take the time to go in and check in on different people or to go and check and take the time to see if the thing before you has been done. Click up can use dependencies to do all of that for you. All right, so let's dive into the meat of this video. I'm gonna show you how to actually set up dependencies. I'm gonna show you how they work and look in Gantt view as well, which is super helpful. And just show you this feature in case you are looking to get into using dependencies. Hopefully this video will guide you in the right direction. Let's get into dependencies. Okay, so what are dependencies? It's these little markers on the task on the outside. You can also see inside the task in the relationship section. So waiting on and blocking. Essentially what dependencies are is they are creating a relationship between one or multiple tasks saying this task is waiting on something or this task is blocking something. Now you can also add relationships that are just a relationship to the task. I'll get into that next with relationships and rollups, but I just really want to focus on the waiting on and blocking dependencies. So you'll see here, waiting on is a task that must be completed. There is a task that exists that must be completed before this task can be done. And then blocking, this is tasks that can't start until this task is completed. So if you have a task assigned to you that has a red block, you're like, okay, I am blocking someone else from getting their job done. What's the due date on this task? Because this project is not gonna move forward without me doing my job. Um, if you go to do your task and you have this waiting on dependency, that means, okay, I actually can't do my job yet because I'm waiting on something. So you can also click into here and when you say, okay, I'm waiting on, then you can click into this task. It'll bring you to it. You'll see who assigned. You can check in and comment to that person um, and just see what's going on within that task. So let's talk about mapping these and then what they actually do. So a couple different ways you can map these, but one of my favorite ways is in Gantt view. In Gantt view is where you're going to be able to see um, if tasks have a due date, they will show up in here. If they don't, they're not going to show up. So if tasks don't have a due date yet, Gantt view is not going to be your best bet to map these out, but if they do, by all means. So basically, if I have something in Gantt view, I am able to, let's go ahead and actually add two new tasks. Um, I'll do them at the bottom and then you can see what they look like without dependencies. So task one, task two, and then we'll do this one is September 27 and this one is September 29. Okay, so now when I go back to Gantt view, you're gonna see those have showed up on my calendar, but they are not linked. So in here, all you have to do is click on this little bubble on the outside, and you can do before the bubble too. Um, then you would just mark this, 
pull it from one task to the other. So then you can see, okay, I'm mapping these things. I could also say, okay, this can't be, this is gonna move forward task one, right? And then this is what I wanted to show you. If you have on show uh, reschedule dependencies, that means when you move one task forward, it's gonna move the due date of the other task as well. So you could always come in here and delete dependencies as well. And you can also add multiple between different tasks. So this, this task is waiting on three things, not just one, or this task is blocking three things, not just one. So again, you're going to hide this, uh, bring that over. So then if you see, when I click into this task and I try to mark it as complete, it's gonna say, hold on, this task is waiting on another task to be completed. Are you sure you wanna change the status of this task? So it's basically saying, you can't close this because you're waiting on something, but maybe sometimes you can. Um, so you can choose to yes, close this task or cancel. Um, okay, so that is one way to add dependencies. The other way is you can click into the task itself, go into task settings, relationships, and then dependency. So now you could add waiting on tasks, blocking tasks, and then just regular linked tasks. And that's where you can come in here and just put in either search for the task. I personally find that having the URL or ID of the task is going to be the quickest way to link those. And then um, so you can grab those from copy link, copy ID. And obviously you'd be grabbing that of the other task you want to make dependent on this. So once you do that, so let me show you that way. Let's um, delete the dependency for the last two. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete. And then I'm going to come back into list view. I'm going to grab the URL. And you can also uh, double click or right click on the outside of a task. And then you can quickly get information like the link ID, stuff like that. So I'm gonna copy this link. And then I'm gonna come to task two. And I'm going to say relationship dependency, this task is waiting on task one to be complete. So now when I add that, press done, you'll see the dependency is living there. Um, okay, so this, let's talk about times when you can utilize dependencies. So first of all, if you have more robust projects that are requiring multiple people um, or it doesn't even have to be a project. We use them for the subtasks in our YouTube video because um, one team member can't upload the video if it hasn't been finalized yet. So basically it creates that marker and that communication without the team members having to really communicate so much back and forth of, hey, is this done? No, it's not done yet. Um, so it really is good for team communication for projects or tasks. It's also great for um, communication with clients as well, because you can say, hey, if you are assigned to this review task, then, um, or this kickoff call, if that's moving, the rest of the project is moving with it. Um, so that's great also for, you know, rescheduling projects as things are getting pushed and pushed and pushed. You don't have to manually go in and adjust the due dates. The dependencies will do it for you. And now note here as well, so you don't have to remap the dependencies in Gantt view. You can just see if I changed this due date of the project kickoff to, let's go ahead and move this to um, September 7th, watch what happens. ClickBot just rescheduled 13 dependent tasks and reassigned all of those. So now I could always undo that if I'm changing a due date and I'm like, I don't want it to move all the other things. But you could also see what it's moving, but a trick in Gantt view that's really handy is say you wanna reschedule everything in the same order and like due dates, but you wanna skip weekends, that's where you can click show hide and skip weekends. And when I'm moving this in here, it's not assigning anything on a weekend. So if you don't have that on here, you'll see it expands it a little bit. And then the weekends are grays, like a darker gray. So you can see that there. But if I hide it, no problemo, it's not gonna fall on a weekend. And that's it. 
So I hope this video tutorial was helpful for you. If you are brand new to ClickUp, you're just starting out, we have some great resources on our freebie page at desilvalife.com slash freebies. I would recommend checking out the ClickUp 101 guide or the simple ClickUp system to start. If you are more advanced, we have some other great tutorials on our channel and an entire ClickUp course and membership in our system school. If you're wanting to plug and play your way to get your ClickUp set up for success. With that, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss a beat. And thanks so much for watching. Uh -huh.